well, um, we, uh, the Protean Inn is a joint venture uh, by Envision Native and Cool Coyotes, which Alan represents, and I'm Envision Native. And um, th this is a, a module that um, it's, it's been in, the, in production uh, for quite some time now for a client of ours that back in 2007, we, we launched this with them and custom built it for them. Uh, luckily, we retained the rights to the code. So that's a you know, little tip there for, uh, for you developers. Um, always try to retain the rights to the code if it's something that you believe that's resellable. Um, of course, we can't sell in their market, so you know there are some things that you have to kind of be concerned about with that type of thing. Uh, but we put this in place with them at a more scaled-down type um, um, feature set for them, and it's evolved over a four-year period. And it is actually on a website that runs. It's a multi-billion-dollar company that they use it for uh, continuing education credits for nurses. So they come to the website and they can, they can sign up for various courses that they produce, go in, take tests on it, and um, you know, go through it, get a certification there as well as uh, get credit towards their continuing um, education. So it's worked out really well for them. So we basically took it from that point to where it is today and we've, we've modernized it, if you will. Um, and uh, Alan will talk about some of this as well, but you know, you, you, the new things in .NET New 6 are pretty powerful. Some of the form patterns that are there and things like that, we've tried to implement those. We're, we're kind of grassroots starting at that, so you'll see some of that to try to offer a standard kind of user experience across multiple modules as well as within DNN. So it kind of seems more like a seamless experience. So what is an LMS? Um, taken straight from our friend at Wikipedia, a learning management system is a software application for the administration, documentation, tracking, and reporting of training programs, classroom and online events, e-learning programs, and training content. What, what should an LMS uh, be able to do is a, is a good question uh, to ask. Just curious, out of a show of hands, are you all familiar with LMS and what that is? Okay, well, good. So we've got a little mix here. Some of you are familiar with it, some of you are not. Um, these are some things that, that a typical learning management system should be able to do. One is centralize and automate administration um, for your courses. So if you are going to have any type of online training or um, you know, in-house type intranet type training on a, on a website, you want it to be all managed in a nice central place. You don't want to have a disconnected system all over the place. Um, and that's really what an LMS does is kind of bring that all together so you can operate everything under one, one roof, so to speak. You want to use it as a self-service as, well, as, self as well as a self-guided service. So, um, you know, you, you want it to be self-paced, but also there may be some more features, like if you do run classroom settings uh, for courses, uh, that doesn't, obviously doesn't fit extremely well into an online model, but you do want to manage that in a central location. So it offers those type of features as well, managing that. You'll want to uh, be able to assemble and deliver learning content in a rapid fashion. Um, the LMSs that are on the market right now, there's a ton of them, just like in the CMS world. Um, th there's a ton of learning management systems out there. Some of them are very easy to deploy your courses in, in various medium or formats. Uh, some of them are not so, so easy, but uh, a good LMS should be able to deliver that uh, quickly. You also want to con consolidate the training initiatives on a scalable web-based platform. And um, yeah, there we go. And uh, this is an interesting one here. A typical LMS, you'll want it to support uh, the portability and standards in the industry. Um, those of you that have had experience in an LMS, you've probably heard of SCORM compliance. Uh, it's a wonderful you know, document about this thick <laughs> that says the way that a learning management system should should work and it goes beyond just the system itself but how training in general should happen and be shared between different systems but uh, for enterprise level systems uh, you'll want it to you, you may have multiple uh, course authors 
or vendors that are creating course content for you, you want to give them a standardized way in, in which to inject that content into your system. So a lot of the more powerful LMSs out there will be SCORM compliant. That is not something that Mighty LMS at this point is going to do. Uh, it may evolve into that, but it's a it's pretty significant undertaking to get to that point. Um, and we also kind of strategically are not doing that because right now in the .NET new community, there really are no options for learning management at a lower end. So we really want to kind of fit that niche and make it available to just a, a single person if they want to, uh, you know, offer training courses on their website they could use this module to, to do that. Um, as well as it, it, it does have enough features to where, you know, it could, it could be used at a, at a um, little more robust level as well. And lastly, you want to be able to personalize the content and enable uh, knowledge reuse within the system. So I'm going to turn this over to Alan. So <clears throat> we also wanted to talk, uh, and I think David has uh, touched on some of the benefits of uh, an LMS. And we wanted to specifically focus on benefits of the Mighty LMS. Um, <clears throat> like many modules uh, in the .NET Nuke world, uh, installation is fairly simple. If you've been through it a few times, once in a while uh, you run into a bump or two in the road, uh, maybe some mountains on occasion. Uh, but in this case, uh, we think that the installation of this module as uh, compared to other LMS systems will be uh, almost trivial. Uh, if you have a .NET Nuke CMS in place, uh, you install this module just like any other .NET Nuke module. Um, also the configuration, I, I'll go back, the configuration is fairly straightforward as well. Uh, some higher end LMS systems would uh, take some very proficient learned people to configure them and get them in operation. Um, also, while the Mighty LMS uh, is feature rich, we have specifically, for a variety of reasons, uh, decided to avoid an LMS bloat. So we haven't put in uh, a thousand features, ten of which might be used most often, and then the uh, other 990 are just taking up a lot of uh, uh, space and uh, time trying to understand and figure out how to use them. Um, it is highly flexible in the course delivery methods. Uh, so uh, any kind of content that you can conceive can be used as content in the courses in Mighty LMS. Uh, videos, PowerPoint presentations, links to other websites, uh, handouts, PDFs, any, any kind of uh, course content that you'd like to use. Uh, and uh, David, you might want to talk a little bit about the different kinds of, just very briefly about the different ways to develop the course content. Yeah, um, one of the cool things that we, we did with this, since we're not really focused on SCORM compliance, um, we've really kept the, the design and architecture of this very open. So a course can be as simple as a PDF if you wanted to share a PDF, so you had the capability to upload a PDF as a course, or it could be more complex like a video, or it could be a, uh, even beyond that, it could be if it's like a webinar that you've already had, and you want to make it available now in a self-paced fashion. So if you did a WebEx, of, you know, for instance, and it was recorded and hosted on their site, you could literally point the course to the WebEx presentation or any other HTML or URL-based um, format on-site or off-site. So Thanks, very Steve. flexible. Uh, and uh, it's built to support unlimited courses and students at this point. So as many courses as you care to create and either generate or procure content for, uh, you can offer through uh, Mighty LMS. Uh, it also offers the ability uh, upon successful completion and passing a test of printing uh, a certificate in PDF format that you can proudly display in your desk or maybe used uh, as continuing uh, education credit. And finally, it was uh, designed specifically for .NET Nuke. So, all the framework that .NET Nuke offers, all the features of the content management system and all the extensibility is there as well. So it's not just LMS, you can use the LMS and control the content on your website uh, surrounding the course delivery. So those are the uh, list of the features and now I think we're going to move into uh, the demo part of the presentation. Yeah, I'll quickly tag on that last point there too. Uh, you're going to see some things, we, we learned some interesting stuff down at .NET Nuke World about um, how 
uh, .NET Core is going to be focused on more business solutions. So not only just the content management system, you know, kind of being a free-for-all type thing, but more strategic solutions. So in this case, this kind of could be wrapped for those of you that have your business and service clients. Um, you know, you can wrap this with .NET Nuke as a learning or a CLMS, so so to speak, for that. So um, one of the, one of those things. Alan, how do I? Okay, there we go. Okay, so what we're going to do here first is walk through um, an experience of the student in the system. So right now we've got a, a, a basic plain Jane website here um, using the Dark Knight skin that's included in DNN 6. Uh, so you can really focus on the module and its capabilities and, instead of being you know, distracted by everything else. So we're going to log in if it will cooperate with us as a student. And sorry, this may be the first load here in a little bit, so it might take just a second to log in. Okay. So what, what we're assuming at this point is that you have registered on the .NET Nuke website, and you're now logging in for the first time to access the courses. And in this case, we have placed the Mighty LMS module on the home page of this portal. So we'll immediately see the module displayed for the first time visitor of a student. So the first time that you come in, what we've done is we've extended the .NET Nuke user, user profile and uh, put some extra stuff in here that may be used specifically for the LMS. And I will not dig too much into detail here. Okay, so we've, we've completed the information here in the student profile. Um, there's some validation that's included in this as well on here, so kind of kind of protect that the integrity of that data. So once we create the profile, now we should be displayed with the uh, student dashboard. Um, here you'll see the first implementation of the new uh, form UX UI standards in in in, D, in DNN six. Um, now the good news, I will mention this just briefly. You do not have to be running .NET Nuke 6 for this module. The module will actually work on DNN 3 and up. Yes, you're wow. right, 3. So um, luckily it was developed under 3, and uh, we have maintained the code base and such that it will work that far back. So um, it, it will actually scale back on these features accordingly as well. Actually, it, on this, you'll actually get the form features even in DNN 3. So you have four tabs here. One is com uh, your completed courses. So if I would have already completed some courses, they would be listed there. If I had any active courses, they would be listed here. I'll briefly show my account here, which is the information that we just put in, including some uh, CEUs is what we're calling it here, but continuing education credits if I had um, had any of these. So we're, for the demo, we're going to look at all the available courses. And those courses weren't made active. <laughs> okay, gotcha. So, um, so here we have one course already created in the system. And if we want to take a look at this course, we'll um, do the view the course here. And it'll display a brief description of the course as well as uh, some information like start, date, time, what, what amount of credit you get for the course. Um, from here, we can register for the course. We can also contact the course administrator if we want to know a little bit more about the course. Um, in a real-world scenario, the description would probably be a little more like a syllabus uh, for the course, but in this case, we've, we've stripped it down a little bit. So I'll go ahead and register as a student here. Yes, we do want to register. That's one of the new form controls there as well, the confirmation stuff. So, so now we've, uh, we've registered for the course. And at this point, we can view the course. So we'll jump right into it. This is the first page you're going to get to whenever you're looking at a course. And uh, you'll see there's three different tabs up here. Um, you can have multiple course files that are associated with a course. You could also have additional handouts or supplemental files, whatever you'd like to call these, as well as links to external URLs. So in this case, We've put a few links in here, like um, instructions to install .NET Nuke. Well, it's going to open up in a new tab and uh, show the wonderful PDF that .NET Nuke Corp put together for installing .NET Nuke. So 
these are for related type, you know, uh, reference links. So we'll come back to the course and we'll click on this and open the course. You'll notice that it opened up in a new browser window. And in this case, we've put together a um, course presentation using Camtasia Studio, um, which is one of the many learning author or course authoring tools out there. In this case, we just did a, a video, and I, I will not watch the whole video, but um, and I don't think audio is working with this, but um, in this case, we do have voiceover and all that with it as well, and you'll see the, the screen movements and so forth. So let's pretend like we've already watched through this whole course here, and we're done watching the content. At this point, we say, okay, I, I think I'm ready to take the test now. Again, you can contact the course administrator here if you have some questions about it or something like that right in the middle. You can also save the course for later, so if you really don't have time to take the test right now, you can leave the system and come back. Take the test. In this situation, you, you know, because of the way it was designed, this is kind of like a signature uh, stating that you have viewed the course, and um, that's helpful for um, some people that, are, that, that would be implementing this. So now we start uh, displaying the questions, and I'll briefly mention that the way the system works is you can have a pool of questions for a course. So you may have 10 questions. In this case, we have a pool of five questions, but we only display three questions. So you can randomly display a subset of the total pool of questions uh, to the student. So we'll go through and answer these questions, and I'm going to answer these correctly here just to kind of get us going here. Okay, I'll submit this. Now, I've answered two of the three questions. So let's say I, I really need to go take my dog out for a walk. So I'm going to, I'm just going to log out of the system, come back later, right? So we've had a nice time with the dog. We come back, log back in as a student. So now you'll notice that um, under uh, my active courses, I have the course shown here, and I can resume the course. So at any state during the course experience, you can resume it. So we'll resume it, and you'll notice it picks up on question three of three. So um, pretty nice in there. So I'll go ahead and uh, submit the answer to the last thing. Now this is the, the results of the test shown right to the student right off the right off the bat. So if they want to print this out, they'll be able to see it. Uh, as an administrator, you can configure the pass criteria of the course. Um, so it grades it at this point and immediately displays it to them. If the student fails, at that point, they'll be directed back to the student dashboard and it'll show up in their active courses in a failed state and they could retake the test. So that's pretty powerful there too. And um, some of this is configurable by the administrator on how you want it to behave. Um, but it's, it, it's, it's pretty neat in that sense that, you know, most, most folks that are doing a learning management system, they are interested in provoking learning. So, you know, they, somebody retaking a test is a good idea because they really want to learn the content. So in this case, you'll notice that I have a ability to come to a course evaluation. This is important for educators to understand how well they're structuring their courses. So this is all configurable as well, which I will show in just a moment with the um, administrator experience. But this is where you can enter a list of questions, and it's specific to the course. So literally for every course, you could have a different evaluation for the course that's very geared to that course. You enter your list of questions, it's based on a Lackert scale type thing, a rating uh, system, if you will. And in this case, we have a 1 to 5 or 5 to 1 rating here, so I'll uh, give it a smattering of answers here and I'll submit the evaluation you'll see all through the system you do have the ability to contact the course administrator now one interesting feature here is as an as an administrator you can flip the switch on this and allow that to not just be an inline email communication it could tie into an external support ticket system of any type so it kind of um, integrates the experience there for the students so that they can get support quickly. So I'll go ahead and submit the evaluation. 
So at that point, we come back and here's our completed courses. So we have, we have passed, that's our status of this one. And you'll notice it's got a lot, nice little print icon here. So I'm gonna click on this because I want to get my certificate. I just uh, did a good job there. And you'll notice it'll open up in a PDF. And there's our wonderful little certificate. Completely configurable by the administrator as well. In background image as well as placement of information. And I believe that was it for the student experience. So Alan, you want to take us through the uh, administrative experience? And we'll, we'll just kind of hold the questions till the end if that's okay with you guys. Assuming you have any questions. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna log in as uh, what I'm calling the learning admin. It's actually the uh, LMS system administrator. And, and uh, actually, you'll notice that when that student saw the list of available courses, only one course was listed, but yet we see a variety of courses here. You'll notice in the uh, active column, only one course is active, uh, either because we're not ready to allow the students to take the course, or we're still building the questions and answers, or building the evaluation. The course hasn't been completely uh, populated with information that we need. So, um, as a administrator of the system, I can do a variety of things. I can edit uh, courses, I can add a new course. There's some other admin tasks down here at the bottom uh, we'll talk about uh, briefly. Um, but let's go ahead and choose to edit a course. And I'm gonna edit the active course. Uh, and this is an important consideration in the LMS. You'll notice there's a message up there saying that I really can't edit this course. Um, can anybody uh, offer an explanation as to why I can't edit this course? Because there are people who are already taking it and you can't change the experience because it's not comparable then to the next Exactly, the exactly. Course. That's an excellent Spot thing. Spot on. In survey systems mm -hmm. and question systems. Yeah. So as Ryan said, uh, information's already been gathered. Students have already, to, uh, already begun to either take the course or they have finished the course. So if we were to revise it now and the student's in the middle of the course, that wouldn't be logical, as Spock would say. So we'll pop out of here. Um, actually, I'm going to uh, click view uh, questions and uh, course files. This is the area when you're editing a course or uh, adding a new course uh, where you can um, upload course files. Uh, these might be gener have been generated by Camtasia or any course author where authoring tool, uh, also where you can uh, upload handout files and specify links. And we saw these links uh, in the student experience. Um, the uh, kind of an interesting part of the system is actually the area where you <laughs> where you uh, enter the questions and answers. And we have two uh, views on this information for the questions and answers. This is a flat list and of course you can move questions up and down. I can't hear because uh, the course is uh, active, actively being used. Uh, or we can look at a tree view uh, which will show us the questions and if I'm going to expand all here. We'll see each question with the answers and uh, now David and I are unhappy with these uh, images that we're using that were we put them in a long long time ago so they're they're going to be revamped but you can see that uh, we have a question and a number of answers one of them if i hover over the um, it should be shouldn't it You're on Firefox, so oh oh there, there we go um, so if i hover over the one that's the correct answer i see a little tool tip saying this is the correct one uh, and the other ones will all not be correct so i can review these and uh, alter them as needed. There's also a little legend uh, choice at the bottom so that we can see what each of those little icons means. Um, and I think, uh, oh, we also, uh, <clears throat> this is a very powerful feature. So you may have built a course uh, and for the most part that course is reusable. You think I want to use this again, but it's already being, it's already in process. Students are already actively engaged in the course. Let me start over again. I don't want to have to enter everything again. The next course is kind of similar. Uh, let's go ahead and clone it. And you can clone all the course uh, attributes and properties, all the questions, all the answers, 
all the files, links, and uh, handouts, and so on. Very so, powerful way yeah. to, to correct a course and retire the old one mm -hmm. so that your data stays integrous. Or 2010 course, 2011 course, 2012. Exactly. And there's a, a ability to look at uh, student information about how many students have taken or in process or failed and passed. Don't notice that negative four for seats available. That's something that will be corrected <laughs> shortly. Um, adding new course, uh, I guess I don't really need to go through this, David. Do I? Did we? Maybe just quickly show them how quick. Oh, okay. To add questions and answers. All right. So let's do this uh, new course. Uh, and uh, my new, my OO course, my new course. Uh, you can see we can go ahead and make it active. No, I can't until I save it. I was going to say active right away. Uh, you can have multiple evaluations, so you can create any number of evaluations and then assign the one of your choice here. My new course. Course admin. Uh, one of the settings we'll see. Uh, and we'll pass over briefly in the configuration setting is that we can indicate that when a student completes a course, an email will go to a course administrator. Or if any of those links are clicked to communicate with the course administrator, this is where we would select that uh, person to receive that. Then what kind of course is it, uh, whether it's self-paced, web, online, or classroom? CEUs, I'm just going to put some numbers in here. Uh, and I'm going to say uh, our choices are by percentage of correct answers for the past criteria type or number of correct answers. I'm going to say percentage and we'll make it 80 percent. So four out of five questions would have to be answered correctly for this to, for the student to pass the uh, test in this course. Uh, I've saved it and now I'm going to uh, begin to build out the test. We'll just ignore the, the courses, the course content and handouts and so on and so forth. Uh, so I'm going to add a question. And uh, how many? And while he's doing that, if you remember the student experience, it was just plain text of questions. And you do have the capability of adding extra rich content to the question as well, so for diagrams and such. All right. So we will, uh, we have the ability here because. Uh, we might have a script of questions we're going to add. We can stay on the screen and uh, rapidly add all the questions without having to navigate back and forth after each question is added. So I'm just going to put something in here just to say that we did it. And click Add. And now you notice we have two questions. And then if I am ready to enter answers for the questions, I can simply click on any of the questions. and. Uh, add new answers. And again, in a similar fashion, we can answer, uh, put in a bunch of answers. I'm going to say 10 is one of the answers, uh, 50 is another answer. Um, uh, what's another answer? Uh, what's the correct answer? How many .NET nukers does it take to change a light bulb? 1138. Pardon? 1138. 1138, OK. That's the correct answer. And that'll be our final answer for this question. And we'll add that. And then you see the uh, questions listed here. Uh, the correct one is marked there. We should be able to return here. And now our tree view has changed. Also, we have the question list, which is the flat list for uh, reordering questions or editing the questions or deleting a question if you need. And. Uh, Okay, so that is the uh, LMS system administ administrator experience for adding and editing courses. Uh, I'm going to take a go back to the course list quickly here and show you uh, that uh, we have the ability to manage the evaluations, add a new evaluation or alter an evaluation uh, professions and facilities. Uh, configuration, uh, again, is using this new DNN form pattern. Um, and we have a variety, actually there are a lot of settings in here, but I think relative to other LMS systems, not nearly as many. Uh, the first one here, notification settings, is where we can indicate whether test results are set, sent to course administrators. Uh, course settings, 
uh, indicates uh, kind of the default retirement age for a, or interval for a course, uh, default maximum number of attendees, minimum and maximum questions, number of questions to ask. And we've kind of overridden um, the uh, host level settings for the kind of files that can be uploaded. So the LMS will only allow you to upload files that are uh, listed here. You may not want all the files that are available in, through uh, DNN host to be uploaded. Uh, student settings, uh, David mentioned using external support. Uh, so here you could put in a link to a, some sort of support system that your organization uses or you choose to use. Uh, and then when the student asks for support, they'll be directed to that um, web address. Uh, we do support the ability to register multiple times for the same course. Uh, other information about CEUs. The, the uh, profile custom fields, uh, David, do you want to chat yeah, about that yeah, quickly? Real quickly, that, those are real powerful in the sense that let, let's take the example of the medical company doing it for putting in place for uh, nurses to come out there. Well, nurses have to have a license number, so it needs to be required for them to even be able to take the course. They need to be able to prove that they're, they're a nurse. So if you can set up a custom field for license number and make that required for a certain so there may be doctors using the system, but they don't have a nursing license number, so they won't have to enter that. So there's some uh, nice flexibility there. Uh, then certificate settings is kind of an extensive list of settings to control the appearance and content of that printed certificate uh, that is available at the end of a test, uh, passing, te uh, passing test. And uh, finally, uh, license value. Uh, we have licensing built into the module. And uh, that completes that. I think at this point, uh, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, we'd love to hear uh, impressions or questions from anybody. I know somebody here has had extensive experience uh, with LMS systems. And uh, it's like yeah, it's questions on this. Oh, really? OK. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, if, if, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Um, for your document, um, your file uploads, um, mm -hmm. what kind of security do you have in place for those? You know, obviously, if someone does download it to their machine and they share these course files with friends, mm -hmm. that's out of your control. But mm -hmm. if people were to share direct links to the files, do you have those locked down security-wise inside the system? Are you leaning on .NET Nukes uh, file security for that, or, or how are you setting that up? At this time, we are leaning on .NET Nukes file security for that. So um, when you do upload a course file, though, it goes into the portals to zero. There's a directory that holds all the course files under portals, whatever your portal ID is, and then you can use .NET Nukes to lock it down. That's an excellent Fantastic. enhancement request. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I was going to ask about the um, issue systems, and, and then you, you mm -hmm. kind of came back around to that. I was going to ask if you were planning that people were going to use external systems like Zendesk or, or other things, or if they were going to be internal .NET Nuke-based systems like the Onyak Tech issue system or, or some other issue systems, mm -hmm. and you were going to create hooks for them. But it looks like it's a straight handoff, correct? Right? Yeah, at present there are no hooks. We have um, uh, at least uh, a a rough outline of a roadmap for enhancements to the system. Well, <laughs> well, you know, um, we just recently made a decision about that. Um, when was uh, .NET Nuke released, Clint? What? When was .NET? <laughs> I'm, I'm running three different things. I know you are, but and Kurt, that's okay. Kurt, look, Kurt's in Orlando trying to join, and he just he just can't figure out. How oh, to Kurt, it. we like Kurt. Hang on. Um, uh, uh, the question you, to you, Clint, was when was .NET Nuke first released? Christmas Eve, two thousand two, right? Two or three? It's either two thousand two. I read one, one time where it was two thousand three, but he said it accomplished two thousand two. So I'm gonna go with two thousand two. And so, Richard English says two thousand two. Yeah. But who was he? You know. So. <laughs> <laughs> he left. So in he honor left. in honor of that date, we will release this on December twenty fourth of this year. Oh, so all right. Christmas Eve release. release. Nice. We want to tag on to the DNN uh, way of doing things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice the anniversary, yeah. The yeah. <laughs> my third question to finish me off, uh, why is the G capital? <laughs> <laughs> so that you would ask why the G is capital. Is it my 
G H T L M S or is it mighty with a special G? What do you see that? <laughs> now, now, Ryan, will you remember that? You, you mean will I tell others about to why? The, no, no. Will you, mighty? will you remember mighty because it's got the big G in the middle? Well, I, I did pronounce it the first time. My G H T L M S. Oh, several times. Midgety. Well, yeah, midgety. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, yes, any Patrick. Any plans for the, uh, like, perhaps your, your more sardonic clients would like to have uh, you know, the time to test taking where it would take time and time. Okay. That's, no, that's a good question. I'm going to direct that back to uh, David. Uh, he's, asking, <laughs> he's asking uh, about a, uh, oh, yeah, no, yeah, come on over here, David. Patrick asked about clients who might want to be able to time the length it took to Complete uh, course. That's actually a good question, um, I, and I'll use our existing client as an example on this. It really comes down to the course content, and most educators, it is the actual teaching instructional time that is a measure of that, and then they have some standard that they follow for their testing structure. So our client, for instance, always asks 10 questions on a standard 60-minute course. So they know they need 50 minutes of content, of teaching instruction and 10 minutes to take the test and that meets their compliance with the California Nursing Board. So it's really different for each educator. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Does, it, question. does it mean though that you're tracking how long that user was logged in and they went through the materials, i.e. can the person come in, start the thing, skip, go to the end of the test and they're done in 15 minutes, will it still allow them to pass? It will. And that's really where that pop-up is kind of worded in such that it is a digital signature, so to speak, you know, so that they're saying, yes, we have viewed the course. And it, there's, there's really no easy technical way to allow an open course format, you know, to, unless you use a closed system to right. really do that. So we felt that would be a step in the wrong direction. That's what SCORM does for you. Yeah. Like exactly. Yeah. Yeah. SCORM yeah. sets some standards for Mm -hmm. all that time right. and not allowing you to skip. Did that, you had another one? Are there any uh, plans to Im implement an interface to uh, you know, have a standard way to uh, interact with custom modules or, or are you planning on just leaving all the functionality within this suite of modules? That's, that's another good question, yeah. Patrick. And it really it is on a roadmap to provide entree into the, uh, an API, if you will, or a way to get at the information. Uh, whether or not we'll allow information to be delivered, I don't know that that will happen, but definitely to be able to extract information, uh, maybe to a reporting system, if yeah. you will. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. How about the ability maybe in the future to upload questions and answers, or can you do that now? If you have like a, a, a test sign? That, that would really move us into the SCORM compliance. Oh, I mean, that's, that's part of what it allows. Um, you create your course and test and all of that in one package and then you load that into the system. Uh, it, it probably will happen. I mean, especially if the module is a success, then we'll be able to obviously fund that type of development effort. Real, real technical question on your data side. Um, since this started back in DNN 3.1, mm -hmm. do you still have things in giant blobs of XML, or is everything now more straightforward database? Do you want to take them? I mean, it's, it's always, like, yeah, it's always been straightforward database. It's, right. Yeah, we don't do anything exotic or which would have been considered exotic back then is stored procedures and and a relational database so, or relational tables rather. Yeah. So pretty straight ahead. Anything else? Well thank you so much. Uh, I think now uh, do we need a short yes, break? Thank you. Oh oh one one quick oh, thing. Oh, I'm oh, so oh, sorry oh, I forgot oh, about this. You'll, uh, you'll notice that at the end of the table, there are little mighty LMS cards. Uh, you may say, well, I don't really need one of those. Maybe you don't, maybe you do. Um, we, we are offering a 5% referral fee to anybody that makes a referral. Uh, maybe you have clients or friends or colleagues that would uh, be interested in that type of system. The trick to that is being sure to let us know <laughs> when you are referring a client. So. Up as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's great. So be sure to grab one of those, and if they're if they're gone, uh, see us. We got more. So.
Oh, and there's also a little Microsoft tag on the back of it that'll be nice to register to. I think Iron Man yeah. wants to. Rob Red said you ought to leave some of the last one. <laughs> 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 <laughs>